Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this tutorial series, we are creating this pop-up using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And we have already designed it using HTML and CSS. So this is how it looks. And now in this video, I'll show you how to add the functionality. What we want to have is that uh, when we scroll down on our page, we should have this uh, displayed over here and we should also have this skip counter over here. And after five seconds, we should be able to skip this uh, ad. And if I click on skip, we can see that it goes away. So this is what we're going to do in this video. Let's get started. All right, here's the source code and we already have the main.js file which will have the JavaScript code. And we have already linked the main.js file over here in the HTML. Now the first thing we will do is we will reference all the elements that we need to have in the JavaScript from the HTML. So we need to have the reference of the pop-up overlay, we need to have the reference of the skip button and we'll also have the reference of this visit button. So let's go to our main.js file and let's type const pop-up overlay equals document.query selector and we have a class called pop-up overlay and after that let's reference the skip button so let's type const skip button equals document dot query selector and the skip button is inside the pop-up container and we have a class called skip button and then we'll also reference the visit button so let's type const visit button equals document dot query selector pop-up container visit button All right now what we need to do is when we scroll down we need to display this pop-up so for that we need to add an event listener to the window. So let's go back and let's type window dot add event listener and we're going to listen to the scroll event and let's create an arrow function over here and here we need to write the code to display the overlay. So what we will do is we will add a class called active to the pop-up overlay when we want to display it and we will remove the active class when we don't want it to be displayed. So let's go to a style.css file and let's scroll up and uh, let's go to the pop-up overlay. So here by default we will set the opacity to 0 and we'll also add a transition so that we will have smooth animation. So let's type transition of all to 700 milliseconds is. And now when we have the active class we will set the opacity to 1. So let's type pop-up overlay dot active and here we'll just type opacity and set it to 1. Now if we go back to our design, we can see that the overlay is not being displayed. And if we add the active class, so here if I just type active, and we can see that the overlay is displayed over here and uh, we also have the pop-up container displayed because uh, it is inside the pop-up overlay division. Now when we add the active class to the pop-up overlay, we'll also add some animation to this uh, pop-up container. So if you go back to the original design and if I scroll down, we can see that we have a little bit of animation for this pop-up container. So let's go back to our CSS and let's go to the pop-up container and here let's type pop-up overlay dot active. So when we have the active class inside the pop-up overlay, we need to add some styles to the pop-up container. So let's type pop-up container and by default here we will set the opacity to zero and we'll also add a transition so that we'll have smooth animation and we'll set the transition to all 700 milliseconds ease. And by default, we will also set the pointer events to none so that the elements cannot be clicked. So let's type pointer events to none. And we'll also bring this pop-up container down a little bit by default. So here for the second axis, which is the Y axis, let's type calc and we'll type 50% plus 50 pixels. And now let's go over here and let's type transform translate and we'll set it back to negative 50%. And we'll also set the opacity to 1. And let's also set the pointer events to auto. Right now let's go back to our main.js file and let's continue with our JavaScript. Now here we will check whether the scroll value is greater than 100. So let's type if window.scroll y. And if it is greater than 100, then we need to add the active class to the pop-up overlay. So let's type pop-up overlay dot class list dot add active. And now let's go back to our website. And first of all, let's remove the active class from the HTML. 
right now let's scroll down and we can see that the pop-up container is displayed over here and if I refresh this page it goes back and let's scroll down once again and it is being displayed over here right now let's add the functionality of the skip button so let's go back to our JavaScript and here let's add an event listener to the skip button so let's tap skip button dot add event listener and let's listen for the click event and let's create an arrow function over here and we just need to remove the active class from the pop-up overlay so let's tap pop-up overlay dot class list dot remove active and now let's go back and uh, if I refresh this page if you scroll down we have the pop-up displayed over here and if I click on the skip button it goes back so everything is working all right till now now we need to add some more functionality over here we need to add the timer of the skip button and we also need to store a cookie inside the browser so that this ad will not be displayed every time the user comes to this page so let's go back and we will add this code inside a function because we have multiple things to do so let's go ahead and create a function to display the ad we'll create a function called show ad and let's cut this code from here and uh, let's paste it over here inside the show add function and here I'll just call the function so I'll just tap show add and we'll do the same for the skip button so let's tap const skip add and let's cut this code from here and paste it over here and here I'll just call the skip add function let's go back to our website and let's see whether it works all right and everything is working all right now the next thing we will do is add the timer so what we need to do is we need to create a variable to store the remaining time so let's create a variable called remaining time and by default we will set it to 5 and we'll also create a boolean variable called allowed to skip so let's tap let allowed to skip equals false by default and we'll also create a variable for the timer so let's tap pop up timer right now let's go over here to the show add function and let's write the code to create the timer so let's type pop up timer equals set interval and we'll set the interval to 1000 milliseconds which is one second and every time we pass one second we need to decrement the remaining time by one so let's type remaining time minus minus to decrement it by one and if the remaining time is less than zero then we need to set the allowed to skip variable to true so let's type if remaining time is less than zero let's type allowed to skip equals true and here in the event listener for the skip button we need to add an if condition so here let's type if allowed to skip then we will call this function right now first of all let's print this uh, remaining time inside the console and let's see whether everything works all right so here I'll just type console.log remaining time and let's go back to our website and let's open the console right now let's scroll down and we have the remaining time displayed over here but it is running too fast that's because we also have this uh, scroll event added now since we are scrolling we have this show add function called again and again whenever we scroll even one pixel so what we will do is we will remove the event listener when we call this show add function and I will also create a new function called start timer and in that we will call the show add function so let's type const start timer and uh, I'll just delete this and here I'll just type start timer and here in the start timer function let's go ahead and copy this code so I'll just copy this if condition from here and uh, let's paste it over here and here let's type show add and here we'll also remove the event listener so let's type window dot remove event listener and scroll and start timer right now let's go back to our browser and let's see whether this works so let's scroll down and we can see that the timer is displayed over here and if I skip right now it doesn't skip but if I wait for zero seconds and if I click on skip now it skips 
but we can see that this timer is going on so we need to stop this timer so here inside this if condition let's type clear interval and we'll add the name of the interval over here pop-up timer and now let's go back and let's scroll down and we have the timer displayed over here let's see whether it stops after zero and we can see that the timer has stopped now we need to show this timer value over here in this text so let's go back and let's do that here I just tap skip button dot inner HTML equals and let's use backticks and let's tap skip in and let's add the variable over here so the variable is called remaining time s for seconds and when we are less than zero seconds we need to set the text to just skip so let's type skip button dot inner HTML equals skip All right now let's go back and let's test it out so here we can see that the timer is displayed over here in the skip button and when we hit zero it goes to the skip text and if I click on skip it disappears now if I refresh this page and if I scroll down once again we can see that the timer and the pop-up is displayed once again over here now we don't want this to happen we want to display this uh, pop-up once every specific period of time so for that we will use cookies to store the information inside the browser so let's go back and uh, let's create a function to create the cookie so the cookie will be created when we click on the skip button so here in the skip add function let's call a variable called create pop-up cookie and let's create the function over here so let's type const create pop-up cookie now to create a cookie you have to type document dot cookie and we have to provide some string over here so first of all we need to provide the name of the cookie so we'll just name it pop-up cookie and we need to set it to a value so let's type equals true and the next thing you have to do is after semicolon we need to provide the expiry date now for that we'll create a variable so we'll just call it expires and after that you need to type path equals forward slash right now let's create this expires variable so first of all let's create a variable called expires days and here you can set the number of days so I'll just set it to 30 so this cookie will be stored for 30 days inside the browser and now we need to create a variable so let's call it date and we need to set it to new date now let's set this date to 30 days after the current date so for that we need to type date dot set time and in parenthesis you have to type date dot get time which gets the current time plus and here you have to enter the number of days so we have already created this variable over here so let's type expires days times 24 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds times 1000 milliseconds so now the date has been set to 30 days after the current date All right now let's create this expires variable so let's type let expires equals and it should also be in key value pairs so let's type expires equals and let's concatenate the date and we need to convert it to UTC string so let's type to UTC string All right, so that's it with creating the cookie now let's go back to our browser and we will check whether the cookies are being added so let's go over to application and here we can see inside cookies we have the website and our cookie should be stored over here so let's go back and let's scroll down and uh, we have the skip button being displayed over here let's click on the skip button and let's go back to the inspector and here we can see that our cookie is displayed over here we have the pop-up cookie and uh, it is stored over here now the last thing we need to do is we need to check whether this cookie is available in the browser before showing the ad so let's go back to our javascript and let's scroll down and here before adding the event listener to the window we will check whether we have the cookie available so let's tap if and for this we will use a regular expression so I can just copy this code and just uh, add it over here so we'll tap exclamation which means if the cookie is not available document dot cookie dot match 
So here you can see this code. You have to copy and paste this exact code over here and just add the cookie name over here. So if you scroll up, we can see that the cookie name is called pop-up cookie. So I have added that over here. Just change that and everything else will be the same. Right now let's go back to our browser. And we already have this cookie over here and let's refresh this page. And if you scroll down, we don't have the pop-up displayed. So since we have the cookie, the pop-up is not being displayed over here. Let's just delete the cookie and let's see whether we have the pop-up displayed once again. So here inside cookies, we have this cookie. Let's go ahead and delete this. And now let's go ahead and refresh this page. Now let's scroll down. And now we can see we have the pop-up displayed over here and we have the skip timer over here. And if I click on the skip button, we will have the pop-up stored in the browser once again. And now if I refresh this page, we will not have the pop-up displayed. And the pop-up will be removed after 30 days from the browser. So that's basically how you can add the functionality of this pop-up using JavaScript. Now you can just go ahead and delete this console.log. Alright, so that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.